How did a plane flying, psych defining, acid dropping Harvard professor come to fall in love with an old man in a blanket? And who was the old man in a blanket whose fleeting presence would leave everyone wondering? Was that a bird, a plane, Superman, or simply God himself? But back to our man of the moment. A legendary American all-star whose kaleidoscopic journey through life brought him to the feet of another worldly love that he didn't have to die to get. While the rest of us were busily investing our time in becoming somebody, Ram Das sold all of his chronological stock in a brilliant attempt to become nobody. In today's Masters episode, we pay tribute to Richard Alpert, also famously known around the world as Ram Das. Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome back to the Masters series. I finally got back to doing a Masters video. Yay, I love this series. I really enjoy studying the chart of an individual person in depth. I think it's one of my favorite things to do in astrology. And on this channel, I will be doing things like looking at country charts. I know I've got a request to do that. I will be doing that. But I am going to keep doing this master's series because it's so much fun. And the format has changed. So before, if you were following these videos, you'll notice that I went into a coffee shop. I would film the chart and I would speak about the chart. Uh, that's how I was doing it. But now I've got my little coffee right here. I'm doing it from home. And um, this is actually not coffee. This is mushroom tea. Now, it's not the kind of mushroom tea that would give you a trip, though Ram Das would be very proud if it was. Um, this is just simply chaga mushroom powder tea. And it's really good. It's very nourishing. It has so many minerals in there. I'll leave a link below if you want to check out and see what it is. But this is really quite good. I'll just taste some now. Yeah, it's very, um, you can have it any time as well. doesn't matter, night, day, whatever. And in order to keep things nice and efficient, I have written every single thing down. And what I'll do is I'll put charts up by my side so you can follow along and you can see what I'm looking at on the chart uh, as I explain and talk you through the different features of his chart and, and his life and, and how everything worked together so beautifully. All right, today we are looking at the chart of Ram Das. There's so much to say, but to stay focused, I've written down a few main points and highlights that I'd like to draw your attention to. So what's my first impression of his chart? Well, one of the first things to see is how nicely the planets are spaced out and distributed across the chart. We've got seven major planets across seven signs that produces a Vena Yoga so the person will excel in the arts, um, basically be an expert at everything. It's kind of the Midas touch. You know, whatever they turn their attention to, they're going to be great at it. Um, and they're very likely going to be rich, which of course pretty much manifested in Ram Das's life. Moon and Mars debilitations are both cancelled due to the fact that they exchange signs with each other. Uh, so that's really fantastic. Because one of the things I saw was, whoa, Scorpio moon. And here, you know, I've got the note, though it's a Scorpio moon, one of the toughest to have, I see this planet as a jewel in Ram Das's chart. As one could say, his life's work was largely about finding peace of mind. He needed to experience a bit of a troubled mind as well. Uh, and we can see that here in, in the chart. Saturn's beautiful position offers the best Digbala possible. Digbala, of course, is directional strength. So his Saturn places discipline on his intellect, which is the ninth house, by a third house aspect. It keeps him physically slim through a first house aspect. And the reason I say that is because often people who have Jupiter in the first house, sometimes they can have larger frame, be more kapha build, have more weight. But, you know, Saturn kept him slim throughout his life. And this Saturn even tempers the release of past karma through the tenth house aspect. So... You know, everything didn't happen at once. He wasn't crushed 
uh, by too much going on, right? Things were spaced out. Saturn is beautiful at doing that, right? So Saturn aspects, when they're slowing your life down, know that it can be a blessing. Rahu Sun combination in the 10th house gave him the ambition to share his soul's expression with the world. With Jupiter as 10th house lord, it also became part of his life's work to move towards unification energies, as opposed to the energies that separate in Virgo or in Mercury. Okay? His mission was also comprised of other Jupiterian ambitions, to journey far and wide, to find a bigger vision and meaning for life, to find bigger contexts within which to house life's many problems, and to get some way of connecting with the all is one, to touch God, to know the other side while being fully here on this side. Rahu is also very interesting in Ram Das's chart as it plays delay on the gifts of his son, right? Rahu delayed the gifts of that beautiful son of his from, from coming out too soon. So you see the delays in life are very good. We need them, right? Timing is everything. They always say that. So he placed a lay on the gifts of his son, his soul's expression. In 1967, when Saturn matured at age 36, he met Neem Karoli Baba Maharaji, uh, who I basically refer to as God. Um, in 1971, Be Here Now was published perfectly in time for his Rahu maturation, which happened just a couple of years later. It was after Rahu matured that Ram Das recorded those famous lectures, those beautiful world famous lectures that are still being listened to today, where he explores the themes of living, dying, and how to be here now with all of one's being completely present in the moment. My favorite part of Ram Das's chart is his Venus. Across all Varga charts, when you study all the different Varga charts, Venus is either in a great friend's house, in own or exalted positions. It sits just about everywhere, like a shining jewel. And seated in the birth chart in Sattva Bishak, it offered healing to the collective consciousness in a uniquely candid way. Rahu, the Lord of Sattva Bishak, he's not going to do things like how everyone else does things. It was through his feminine side that he could receive the many secrets of the universe. And placed in the ninth house of academia, I believe it was his feminine side, his Venus, that shared his insights with the world at large. So that was my overview of Ram Das's chart. Very brief. There's obviously a lot more to say, but I hope you enjoyed that. If you enjoyed that, then please do leave a like or comment and be sure to subscribe to this channel for more content. And I look forward to seeing you next time.